we had a pretty great start to our 2022 in the Hunter Classic last week with a 191 Whitetail over on Red Feather Falls, and I'm hoping to kind of continue what we started last week here on Pickabean Bay today. Now, of course, we've been grinding for a 200 Whitetail in Classic for forever, but one other thing that we've kind of been working on has been trying to get at least one trophy for every species in the game, and it's been a while since we really competition hunted. I like our odds in some of these comps for Pick a Bean Bay today, and that's why we've got a pretty weird loadout. We're running with the 4570 Buffalo, the Snake by Bow, a Muzzle Loader, and the 7 mil. That's going to give us the opportunity to potentially kind of have an opportunity kill for any of the species that have competitions that were entered in, and hopefully by the end we can have a new trophy to our name. Now the first order of business is going to be kind of understanding how the water buffalo comp works and to be completely honest I kind of want this one to charge and for those of you that are kind of unfamiliar with classic basically water buffalo always charge although I thought they had a bit of an animation that was supposed to go along with that. Um, basically what we need to do is drop them at 100% harvest value when they're not spooked. Now that didn't go exactly to plan but at the very least we can confirm if that charging kind of animation and stuff constitutes unspooked, and evidently it does. So, assuming that they do the animations kind of properly the next time, or if we just take the shot when we're not trying to learn that stuff, we should be good to go for shots like that. And at least we kind of know what we're up against. I really don't like to try to find that stuff out on a potential really trophy caliber one, and that was a good one, but definitely not one that would make the top three. So, got another one over here. I actually do want to know do they still do the animations like they used to and like he did on the the second charge there? Because if not, we're going to have to be a little more careful with the way that we approach them. I mean, that one too is just kind of standing there, not doing much of anything. Now, maybe he doesn't see us, but we're just going to go ahead and potentially heart or double lung shot him. And avoid having to use a med kit on one that is not all that big. So it seems getting 100% harvest value shouldn't be too big a deal with a snake bite. And of course we have the 4570 buffalo should we need it. I will admit water buffalo are not as fun to hunt unless they kind of do those animations. Now the way that we kind of used to do it was to space it out in such a way that they would charge and then stop. Kind of like that. And at least it required a little bit of kind of skill in timing the shot and placing the arrow you know kind of quickly into the brain as we did there. It's still oh we did a mission. Alright, uh, don't even know what that one was, but that's good. It, it still doesn't seem as difficult as I feel like it probably should be, but at least for the moment, uh, we're kind of finding a strategy to compete with the competition. This track may have been well worth it. We've got a pretty good looking Bantang out here in front of us, and the important part is he is up to the max weight estimate. The Bantang comp today is the heaviest one taken at 100% harvest value with the inline muzzleloader, where I think it can be any muzzleloader, but in our case, we've got the inline. So at some point, we're gonna have to wait for him to give us a ideal angle. And in the meantime, I think we're actually going to use one of the weirder mechanics in the Hunter and take a drink of water. Basically, it'll kind of distort your screen a little bit as you start to I guess to come to heat exhaustion or whatever the idea is there. And I think it may shorten how long you can hold your breath. So just to potentially avoid any struggles from that, we can sort of take care of it beforehand. And hopefully, I mean, with the hill as it is, we can get a good close shot at this guy. It's been one heck of a track up until this point, but I mean, here we are 30 meters away. Going back to what I said earlier, I don't love the idea of learning that the inline muzzleloader at this angle just can't get it done, but I can't imagine a better scenario than this, so we're going to keep it a little bit back with the hopes of it getting like liver and lungs, and you know what? He dropped. That will be 100% harvest value, so it comes down to the weight, and max weight estimate is about as good as we can ask for, and he's definitely decent scoring. I don't think he's huge. In fact, I think they get into the 170s and his max score was at 165, but I'd say we have a shot with that guy. 836 kg, I actually don't even know what the top three was at 154. 
I mean, that makes him one of our better Bantang. Hard shot and double lung. I thought we were a bit further back than that, but that'll work. And that puts us in first at the moment. Now, I'm not sure. We entered four different competitions today, and I don't know when they all end. I'll look into that after we get a trophy shot going, though. I don't believe it, but we are in first by 26 kg with a mere three and a half hours remaining. So I'm very confident we'll get top three on this. It's a matter of whether or not we'll get first. I think we have one first place trophy so far, and that was the elk competition of all things from that week on Settler's video we did. I think we made two that chroma filter. I was gonna wait until the sun came out, but on Pickabean Bay, it may never come out. So we're gonna be happy with that. And really that opens up a lot of possibilities. I'd like to get back after Water Buffalo because that feels winnable as well. Or at least when I say winnable, I mean uh, an opportunity at the top three. And then towards the end of the hunt, at least my plan for the moment is to fast travel up to this area and at least kind of take a better stab at trying to get a Rusa or Sandbar trophy. That area tends to be good for them and with the Bantang out of the way, I mean, we could do better. But it's definitely not one that we're going to, say, track every one that we get now, since we are in first place at the moment. That looks rather intriguing. Pretty good sized buffalo, 225 to 265. And at least in this case, we can actually look at the horns and have an idea of where we could potentially place. When it comes down to the weight, it really is all kind of down to just harvesting the animal and getting to see from that. Now, broadside makes it tough. Looks like we're going to get to deal with the charging one. That looks decent. I'd say that's a fair sized uh, kind of like spread. I guess that's one of the important factors there. And I felt like that shot was a little low, but that will do the job. I'm gonna guess 250s for that guy. If we can actually claim him, that will be useful. Brain shot there at 9 meters. 244. I think that leaves us just outside the top 3. Though in this one... Hmm. That was bigger than our last buffalo, but that did not count. I'm not sure why. Again, I think 249 was third place, and this competition ends in a day in three hours, or, you know, a day plus whatever was left in that Bantan comp that I mentioned. So, that score, had it just barely gotten into top three, I'm almost sure wouldn't have held, but I don't know why it didn't count. I went through the entire scorecard, and... I really don't get it. Like, the stance was charging, he was 100% harvest value. We shot some other charging ones, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but this was going to be an opportunity for a little bit of fun regardless. Luckily, it's not a particularly large water buffalo charging us in this case, so it's really no worries as to what happens, but because he's not going to be one that could potentially score high, I wanted to at least use the 4570 buffalo once before we head up into Sambar and Rusa country, so it's gonna cost us a good bit of camp and supplies. But this tends to be my best spot for them. That is a Sambar doe. Now they will travel in herds, and the only kind of lure for them is the Sambar scent. So we'll put that out. Actually, they're a lot bigger than they look, and the 4570 buffalo is ethical on them, so if they come in, that may be our weapon of choice. That one is not weapon specific for the competition. Well, the good news is there definitely was a herd. The bad news is I'm not even sure that there was a male. I think they'd be called stags. I'm not sure if it's buck or stag, but I really don't hate that result, especially given the fact that I didn't see any antlers. I really would have hated to kind of spook everything immediately with a gunshot, but had it been one that would give us a chance at placing in the comp, that would have just kind of been the way to go. So we'll be able to kind of walk around and explore a bit. There actually is, or I thought there was something over in that area. It might have been a weird graphical kind of thing with that branch. But yeah, there can be a Rusa deer, Sambar deer, and I've even seen Bantang up in this area. So we'll pay attention to tracks and calls and see what else is around. And right here in front of us, are two pretty good reasons to not just go ahead and spook everything out of here. Two sandbar bucks coming in. Not exactly impressive ones, definitely not ones that are going to allow us to place in the comp. 
But I mean, that just shows like what can happen fast traveling to an area. Now, we're in a weird spot. I specifically chose the snake bite bow really for its power on water buffalo, but again, as I mentioned, sandbar are extremely tough. I think that got into a lung, but unfortunately, we weren't able to drop him with that weird circumstance the way he was standing, but it'll bring him down. And at least again, it was kind of silent. The other good thing is he was unable to cross the water, so that'll save us a little distance on track and as he's basically running in circles. Not at all a bad track, all things considered. And it was just a single lung shot, so especially for that, for him to only go two and a half minutes, and again, that kind of running in circles thing reduce the amount of distance we had to go. Not too bad, 143 is going to put us top 10 for the moment, but as I said, that one is not going to stay, so it would be nice to get a better one. They are definitely, in my experience, a little bit difficult to find a bunch of over a reasonably short period of time. As I said, we're kind of towards the end of this hunt, but I mean, we're in an area where they tend to be, so you never know. I may have been overly determined to end this video with a Rusa deer. After getting some water buffalo, obviously the Bantang and the Sambar deer, I thought, you know, the last competition that we've entered that we haven't shot anything for was Rusa, and we ran around up in the north a good bit, ended up down into here, and just no Rusa deer anywhere, despite the fact that we've covered quite a bit of ground, but unfortunately we are pretty much all out of time for today, and at the moment, we are still sitting in first place for the Bantang comp, so like I said, I'm very confident that we will end up in the top three, and by the time this video comes out, I'll know for certain where we are going to be, so I'll have that in there, probably edit it in with the trophy shot or something like that. I'm sure you guys already know the deal. Go figure. A Rusa antler down here as we're ready to wrap up. I guess that's a Rusa deer for today's hunt, but anyway, that is going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.